Okay, here's a car you don't see every day. A TVR 280i. Uh, TVR is a small, or was a small British uh, sports car manufacturer uh, based in Blackpool, England. Uh, they kind of were along the same lines as Lotus, but not quite as big as uh, Lotus. Um, they were known for their M-series cars, which were the Griffiths and the Vixens, which were kind of curvy, and they put big engines and small little chassis, uh, and uh, had pretty uh, hairy-chested cars. But then, in 1980, they came out with what's known as the Wedge Series. Um, Initially, it was called the Tasman from 1980 to 1984, and then from 84 to 87, they changed the name to 280i. They also made some improvements uh, on it at the time. Um, initially came out as a two-seater coupe, uh, which had sort of a hatchback. Um, then they had a two-plus-two coupe, and then came the two-seat convertible, which is what this is. Um, All TVRs were based on tubular space frames, and this one's no different. Um, although when they made this, they actually uh, squirted something inside the tubes and powder coated the outside to make them more corrosion resistant, although apparently they're not particularly corrosion resistant. Um, the space frame was designed by a former, a former Lotus engineer, and then it has a fiberglass body on top. The fiberglass body was also designed by a former Lotus uh, employee uh, and TVRs were known for using uh, sort of off-the-shelf parts from other manufacturers for the mechanicals and this one is no different um, the suspension and steering are from the Ford Cortina uh, manual transmission is from the Ford although they did offer an automatic transmission which seems illegal Front disc brakes are from a Ford Grenada. Uh, rear brakes and differential are from a Jag XJS. Um, the rear wishbones for the suspension are TVR 280i specific and made by TVR. Uh, the engine is a Ford Cologne V6, which is an iron block and iron heads. Made 160 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque, which wasn't bad for a car that weighed 2,200 pounds. Um, England, they also uh, tried to make a cheaper version with a Pinto uh, four-cylinder engine, uh, but it did not sell well at all. Total production for the V6 cars was 1,167. Uh, zero to 60 time was eight seconds, and it was imported in the U.S. from 1982 to 1987. Um, now they loaded them with content for the U.S. They added electric windows, air conditioning, leather seats, and walnut trim. Um, in England, they also stuffed a Rover V8 into the cars in 1983, creating the 350i, uh, but they did not import that into the U.S. And surprisingly, uh, compared to the iron block V6, the all alloy V8 weighed like 50 pounds more than the V6 but had more power so there you go.
as limited production sports cars go, this one is surprisingly affordable. Prices range between about $6,000 and $12,000 depending on the condition. Um, if you're looking to buy one, the most important thing is check out the condition of the tubular space frame chassis uh, because if it's had accident damage or rust, um, it's basically a scrap car. Uh, although apparently you can buy new chassis uh, from England and have them imported. Um, with a fiberglass body, of course, they're prone to ripples and stress cracks. Uh, also, because of the fiberglass body, you have ground electronic problems with grounding. Um, so if you have electronic problems, it's probably a poor ground and that can be relatively easily fixed. Um, you can see it has a tall console and a short shifter. Um, apparently they made them both four speeds and five speeds. I think only the four speeds were imported in the U.S. But apparently the feel of the four speed is much superior to the five speed. Uh, most TVRs apparently do leak. And um, although the engine is basically an English car engine with Bosch fuel injection, the uh, block is the same as used in um, some U.S. Fords, the Ranger, the Pinto, the Bobcat, and the Capri. One of the clever things about this car is the convertible top. It's called a three-position top. Um, this is it in the top-down mode, obviously. And then this is it with the target top uh, mode. So you have the collapsing uh, rear part, and then you've got a fabric-colored solid panel that goes across um, to make it a completely enclosed cockpit and the panel fits into the rear trunk. Uh, the only problem with this is apparently replacing the convertible top is an expensive proposition. And this is the business end, the Ford Cologne V6 um, sort of buried in there. It does have fuel injection, um, does come with air conditioning, and otherwise not too exciting but does have plenty of power and plenty of torque and uh, actually a very nice exhaust note too. It's a fun car to drive. It does have a decent sized rear trunk um, and then here's the uh, engine or the uh, target top lid. Uh, there is a spare tire and uh, of course once you put the lid in and the spare tire it does take up some of the luggage room but it's not bad for a little two-seat sport car, sports car. It's got a very comfortable interior. The seats are uh, amazingly comfortable. Um, and there's the wood trim that came on the US models. It doesn't have a dead pedal, so if you drive long distances, your left foot's going to get tired because there's no place to put it. Uh, my other comment is if you own one of these, um, remove the panel back here and check the condition of the bar. Uh, it's part of the chassis and when we redid this one there was quite a bit of rust there so uh, double check and make sure you don't need to do some uh, de-rusting. So there you have it, the long and short of the TVR280i or Tasman. Uh, surprisingly affordable and rare sports car with um, fairly easily obtainable parts.